adore you. We thank you tonight for your kindness. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace, oh God. Lord, for there is none beside you, none like you, oh God. And I thank you tonight, oh Lord, for loving us. Thank you for loving us past our mistakes. And thank you for loving us past our mess-ups. Thank you for loving us past our shame and our guilt, oh God. Thank you for loving us, Lord, past all of our wrongdoing. We're so thankful, oh Lord, for a Savior and a God who loves us tonight unconditionally, oh Lord. I thank you and I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise tonight. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord God Almighty, which is and was and is to come. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's good to know that the Lord loves us no matter where we are, no matter who we are. He says, I love you. He loved us so much, the Bible says, that he robed himself in flesh and that he came to this earth and gave his life on an old rugged cross. He shed his precious blood so that you and I may be redeemed, so that we may have life and life more abundantly, so that we may have new life, that we were made a new creation in him. I'm thankful tonight to know that Jesus loves me that much. The old adage says, when they asked Jesus how much he loved us, he stretched out his arms and died on the cross. That's how much he loved you and I. And I'm thankful tonight for that love. I'm thankful for that compassion tonight that he shows each and every one of us. Amen. Before we get into the word, I, I want to go before the Lord in a time of prayer. And if you've got a, a need tonight, a special need or just a need, will you just make it known by lifting your hand. God knows every need in this place. He sees every situation, every circumstance. Hands going up all over this place. God knows. And we serve a God that is able to step in and to intervene into every situation, every circumstance that you're facing here tonight. Uh, also, I, I want us to remember, I believe it's my grandmother's um, cousin in Tennessee um, lost her, her son. He, he killed his wife and then committed suicide shortly after. So want to pray for that family that the Lord um, would be with them. I believe her name is Diane. And so we want to pray that the Lord would be with them and touch them and help them during this, this tragic time and all that they're facing and going through. And then we also want to pray that God will just meet every need that's represented in this place tonight. We serve a God that is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. There is nothing too hard for Him. There is nothing impossible for Him. And so tonight we're going to take these needs before the throne of God and we're going to ask God to begin to move and begin to minister to every need that's represented in this house tonight. Will you help me pray right now? Mighty God, you've been so good to us, Lord. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you, God, for your abundant joy. We thank you for your peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, O oh Lord, for being our rock and, and, the, and, and, and a sure foundation, O oh Lord, that we can lean on, that we can trust, Lord, and that we can have a, a, a solid foundation tonight. God, I thank you for being our Redeemer. I thank you for being our Savior. I thank you, O oh Lord, for being our Rescuer tonight. God, you see every need that's represented in this place by the uplifted hand. God, financial situations, family situations, marital problems, oh Lord, you, you see it all. You know it all, God. I am praying right now that you'd begin to step in and begin to intervene, oh Lord, into every situation represented in this house tonight. God, for you know all, you see all. God, and we know that there's nothing too hard for you. God, for in your word you declared that all things are possible through you. And so tonight we believe. God, tonight we trust in you. We have faith in you tonight, believing, oh God, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, I pray for Diane and her family. I speak peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God, in these circumstances. I pray, oh God, that you'd wrap your arms of love around them. God, and usher in your spirit, oh God, and begin to allow them to know, God, that you have it all under control, God, and that you are a God, Lord of peace, and that you are a God of joy. 
God, I speak joy into this house. I speak peace into this house. I speak, oh God, all that we need tonight, you know and you understand. And so we cast all of our cares upon you because we know you care for us. God, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord that I feel in this house tonight. There's such a sweet, sweet presence of the Lord in this place. Quickly, before I dismiss the youth, um, just a a quick reminder. Don't forget, Trunk or Treat is this Saturday, um, beginning at 4 o'clock. We'll go from 4 until 6. We need you here if you're doing a trunk. We need you here and set up no later than 3.30. So however long you think that's going to take you to get set up and get things in order, we need it all set up and ready to roll by 3.30. So if you could do that, please do so. And we are looking forward to having a great time. And uh, listen, it's not too late. If you've not signed up for a trunk and you're you're on the the line, we need you to sign up. We're still a couple of cars short um, from where we wanted to be. And uh, I'll tell you, we, we, we need all the help we can get. Amen. We, we need people to sign up, and we, we still need people who can help do parking. Um, if we don't get any parking attendance, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess I'll stand out there and do some parking. Um, but we need some people to help out in any way that you can. Um, see myself, see Pastor Jared, anyone on the ministry staff, and we'll get you plugged in. And, and we, we just need some people to help us um, to make this event a success, and we are planning on having a great crowd, and it's going to be, uh, from what I understand, great weather. And so we're, we're thankful for that. And so it's going to be a good day in the Lord. And uh, we're, we're wanting just to bless our community and love on them and uh, let them know that we're here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Connect, you can be dismissed to go to your class if you'll just remain standing with me for another moment. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, if you will turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll be reading verses 4 through 6. This is a very familiar portion of Scripture. You all probably know it by heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning at verse number 4. I'm reading out of the English Standard Version. The Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. Lord, for all that you're doing in this house here tonight. I thank you for every believer that has come and gathered here on this Wednesday night to worship you, to lift up your holy name. I'm praying tonight, God, that as this word is spoken, as this word is delivered, that that you would help us to hear your word, help us to to be doers of your word, oh God. We want to receive all that you're speaking, God. I I pray that you would open our eyes, open our hearts and our our minds, oh God, to hear your voice and to recognize, oh Lord, what you're doing in this house. God, give us understanding. Give us wisdom, oh Lord, in all things according to your word. Lord, we, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. We started this series last week entitled Knowing Your Enemy. And so tonight we will continue this series. As I told you last week, um, unless the Lord changes some things around, I'm planning on this series going um, through the end of the year. And so it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy series, but I, I think it's much needed. Um, also, don't forget, next Wednesday night is First Wednesday Prayer, so you don't want to, dis- you don't want to miss that. And we'll be serving some food um, beginning at 6 o'clock, so you don't want to miss that. Be here for that, for food, 6 o'clock, and then we'll begin praying at 7 p.m. So last week we started this series um, entitled Knowing Your Enemy. And so last week we learned um, that God is greater And so tonight, as we continue this series, I want to talk to you about what do you really believe? What do you really believe in this? 
I don't typically do this, but this, I guess, in essence, could be a sequel to what I preached Sunday. Um, this may be the second part um, uh, to what I preached on Sunday. If you missed it, you have to go back and watch it. Um, but what do you really believe? Stop and, and think for a moment. Why is it that, that one person is able to do, as the Bible says, and love their neighbor while another person hates his neighbor and steals from them and tries to bring them down and hurt them in any way possible. One person sees that all men are created equal and that life is, is a precious gift from God, while another person judges people by the color of their skin and hates them for no other reason than they just don't look like I do. Environment and, and economics and culture, geographical location and education and religious beliefs and, and social statuses. Although each of these factors will, will play a role in the life of a person, each person behaves the way they do based purely upon the mindset that they possess or even better, the mindset that possesses them. See, our thoughts develop our character and then they determine our destiny. Through the process of time, a person can become a Nobel Peace Prize winner or they could become a serial killer. Simply due to the fact of who has control of the mind. I know that's two completely opposite ends of the spectrum, but I'm trying to get my point across here tonight. We, we've got to understand that, that thousands upon thousands of thoughts go through our minds on a daily basis. Some of these thoughts you won't even remember thinking these thoughts. Some of these thoughts we, we rebuke and get rid of them just as quickly as they, they try to infiltrate our mind. But other thoughts we, we store in the capacity of the mind called our memory for consideration at a later time. Then there are the thoughts that embed themselves into our conscience. It is these perverted thoughts that we must get rid of at, at once and replace them with righteous thoughts. Because if we don't do this, these thoughts which fashion our character and ultimately determine our destiny will bring us down. See, in order to develop a, a morally and spiritually successful life that's, that's filled with meaning and direction and purpose and fulfillment and love, we've got to be able to keep the devil from having control of our minds. The battle begins in our mind. We must be strong in the Lord, the Bible says, and in the power of His might. We, we need to understand that, that regardless of our past, regardless of even our current conditions, regardless of our perception of what the future may hold, that God is able to change our way of thinking. He's able to change our way of acting. He, he's able to, to create new desires and passions within us. He, he's able to change our, our incorrect concept of Him and, and make our impure thoughts pure and give us a brand new outlook on life. However, this requires letting God have complete control of our mind. So when people are, are taught hand-to-hand -hand combat technique, they, they are taught different techniques on how to fight. You, you see this maybe commonly in our military and, 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 and police officers. And, and during this hand-to-hand -hand combat training, the drill instructors would, would drill into their minds that, that in a wartime situation or a fight, the person that they were fighting is in fact the enemy. And their mission is to kill them before they kill you. So if you wanted to live, then you better use these techniques to defeat them in order for you to stay alive. You see, your life depends on how you use what you're being taught in that moment. By teaching someone these, these techniques and changing the way they think, they, they equip them with something that literally changes them. 
See, you have been equipped in your mind with techniques that give you the ability to defeat the enemy and survive. Listen, I, I don't know if any of you or anybody even watching tonight truly understands that we are in a war right now. We are in a spiritual war. And I'm not talking about a physical war that's being broadcast on the nightly news. Well, we've got those too. There are no news reporters giving detailed descriptions of the day's events. People are not dedicating their front page headlines to this war. But it's sad that people are not being informed to the atrocities that, that are going on in this war. Thousands upon thousands of casualties result from this war every day, yet people do not even realize that it's going on. See, there is uniqueness about this war that is different than any ever war. This war is not fought in the desert or in the sea. Neither is it being fought in the jungles or, or the mountaintops. It's not being fought with bullets or bombs or rifles. Yet it is a war, and the battlefield for this war is the mind of every person. The weapon that the enemy is using, hear me tonight, is mind control. <laughs> Spiritual warfare is something we all are involved in. Whether we care to admit it or not. Some of us are soldiers battling the enemy, engaging in, in hostile missions and, and wielding the sword of the Spirit and, and just battling all of hell. But others have unfortunately become prisoners of war and they're being held behind bars in a prison. And although free from the natural bars and doors, they are still being held captive. They are mentally mixed up and they are emotionally emasculated and spiritually lost and they want to be free but, but they're unable to escape what seems to be impenetrable bars. They're being held in solitary confinement by the guards of, of fear and doubt and guilt and lies and, and discouragement and disappointment and discontentment. They have become casualties. They are experiencing the effects of mind control. See, the devil tries to use mind control because he knows that whoever has control of the mind has control of the body. He understands that to have mind control over someone or a group of people can cause mass destruction. And if we look around at the world today, we see that the devil is using mind control on people trying to cause mass destruction. Somebody says, well, what, what truly is mind control? Mind control is the term used to describe covert behavior modification techniques. In its simplest forms, it is the quote-unquote loss of control by an individual over free will or their power of choice. <laughs> See, mind control is achieved by the method of deception. In my prayer every single day, I pray, Lord, help me not to be deceived. There are way too many people being deceived right now against what the Word of God speaks and what the Word of God says. In those moments, lies are presented as truths. Listen, understand that a half-truth is still a whole lie. <laughs> and that's what the enemy likes to do. He likes to speak those half-truths to you. 
to make you somewhat believe what he's speaking is true. But in the actuality and reality is that it's still a whole lie. See, a, a, a false show of friendship and acceptance are, are methods of recruitment into the atmosphere of mind control. Guilt, fear, separation, isolation are ways that, that the enemy uses to, to infiltrate the mind and gain control. He will cause you to believe that the things you have done in your past are being remembered by God. Even though the Word of God says that when you repent and you tell God that you're sorry, that He would remember them no more. The Bible says He'll cast them as far away as the east is from the west. But the devil will cause you to believe that God still remembers everything you've done in your past. And the devil will make you feel as though the people of God are looking down on you with strange eyes and that you'll never achieve forgiveness from God or from the church. So then, hear me, I'm I'm talking, I know, oh my God, I feel the Spirit. So then you begin to isolate yourself from the people of God. (laughs) You start missing one service. And then next thing you know, you're missing three or four services in a row. And then you're wondering why the church don't love you anymore. And you begin to isolate yourself. And then guess what happens? Loneliness begins to set in. Depression begins to set in. And all you want to do is close the blinds wherever you live and sit in the dark places. Oh my God, hear me. The door of your mind has become open, which allows the devil to come in and take control. That's why people are in the condition they're in right now. See, the devil wants nothing more than to put your mind in a stronghold. Somebody say, what is a stronghold? A stronghold is a mindset that is impregnated with the spirit of helplessness, the spirit of depression, discouragement, anxiety, that causes a person to accept as unchangeable and irrevocable a situation in their lives, even though they know it goes contrary to the will of God. See, the devil knows that when we believe something in our minds, it not only alters the way that we perceive that certain thing, but how we begin to act and live according to what we believe. That's why when someone goes to the doctor and the doctor tells them, I'm sorry, but you have a fatal condition and you only have a couple months to live. But the Bible says... With his stripes we are healed. Listen, if you're battling any kind of sickness tonight, I'm telling you it's God's will for you to be healed. Because the Bible says so. But listen, but because the devil has a stronghold on our minds, we believe the report of the doctor. Y'all ain't helping me tonight. Listen, and I, I'm not saying to dismiss everything the doctor tells you. Doctors are here for a reason. I, I fully, I believe in doctors. There's nothing wrong with going to the doctor. But if we're not careful, we'll allow the mind control that the devil places on us. To we become discouraged and depression begins to set in. And then anxiety takes hold of us and we begin to worry about what is supposed to come. Y'all missed it. We begin to worry not what about has happened right now, but we worry about what may come. Uh, May come. And if we do not break that stronghold in our mind, then we will die physically and spiritually. So I ask you the question tonight, whose report will you believe? Howie preached a message uh, four or five, six weeks ago about whose report. Will you believe? See, if God's word says that we are healed, listen, God cannot lie. Anybody ever read in the word of God where God lied or Jesus lied? No, God cannot lie. The Bible says his word will not return unto him void. His word is forever settled in heaven. So guess what? We should be healed. Now I know and I understand that sometimes we pray for healing and sometimes it doesn't happen. I can't explain it. I don't know why. 
But what I'm trying to tell us tonight is if we're not careful, the enemy will use those strongholds against us in our minds. We need to break those strongholds in our minds and just give God some praise. The the scripture that we read tonight says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means they aren't guns and bombs and, and rifles and all these other things. They're not tanks and airplanes. These are not man-made weapons of destruction, but they are weapons or they are, get this, they are techniques that we are equipped with in our mind and in our heart that we can use to defeat the enemy and we can be victorious. God is already fixing the fight. See, the the military has missiles that are capable of of traveling at at great distances with super fast speed and and pinpoint accuracy. But listen, we have the weapon of prayer. Prayer is faster than any missile ever invented. And it is mighty through God. And it is so accurate that through the Word of God, it will even divide asunder the marrow from the bone. See, in the natural... I may not be able to win every physical fight that I have. But in this battle, with the enemy of our souls, with the devil, and all of hell, as long as I use these techniques, I will win and I cannot lose. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. The scripture that we read tonight then goes on to say, to the pulling down of strongholds. Those mindsets that are impregnated with hopelessness and discouragement are destroyed. The forces of hell are put to flight in that moment. I have the weapon of His name. Y'all heard that song I think Charity Gale sings, I Speak Jesus. Oh my God, we need to sing that wherever our praise team is. I have the weapon of His name. All I have to do is speak the name of Jesus at any given moment, any given time, and His presence begins to encompass around me. In the name of Jesus, I've got the victory. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says demons have to flee. Tell me, who can stand before us? Because in the name of Jesus, We've got the victory. We should know that we are somebody because God does not make mistakes. When God formed us in our mother's womb, when we, when we were given birth to and, and when we were made alive into this world, God knew that we had a specific plan and purpose for our life. God does not make mistakes. And so when He made you and formed you, it was for a specific purpose and plan. Do not allow the enemy to to speak strongholds into your life. My God. We've got to learn to pull down the enemy's strongholds in our minds. If you're with me, shout amen. The scripture tonight then goes on to say, the casting down of imaginations. Imaginations, if you didn't know or understand, are a product of the mind. Somewhere along the way, as we become adults, we tend to lose our imagination. But you talk to any child, any kid that's, that plays and goes outside, they, they, they've got a, a, a huge imagination. They can be all by themselves, but in their imagination, <laughs> they know what's going on. Imaginations are a product of the mind. And the devil, hear me, uses our imagination to try and defeat us by causing us either to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to or to have such an inferiority complex that that we believe there is no reason to live. Then there are those like the ones in the days of Noah. Their very imagination was evil. They did not do evil through carelessness, but 
They deliberately and, and uh, did thought how to do evil. I think about all these organizations and people that go against God. I need y'all to hear me tonight. Our government taking prayer out of schools. Trying to take the Ten Commandments, or maybe they have taken the Ten Commandments out of all of our federal buildings. Trying to take in God we trust off the back of our money. They, they want to take one nation under God out of the, the, the Pledge of Allegiance. They're, they're trying to tell the preacher what they can and what they cannot preach and say. Listen, I've been going to the gym I don't know, probably four weeks now. And I hate every minute of it. But when I'm on the treadmill, I, I try to watch something on my phone just to try to get my mind away from actually what I'm doing. And I watch something on my phone. And so we've got Disney Plus, as I'm sure most of you do. And so I, I pulled up Disney Plus and I, I started watching this show, this series. And it's a basketball series about a high school. And in this series, right smack dab in the middle of it, all of a sudden this couple turns out to be gay. I'm talking about on Disney, y'all. Stuff that our children have access to. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Stuff that our children have access to and begin to watch. You want to talk about infiltrating things into minds? That's what the enemy is trying his best to do through every source and, and social media and movies and series and everything that he can do. He's trying his best to, to uh, put these strongholds in our children's minds. Listen, and he wants nothing more to, than to let our children know that it's acceptable and that it's all right. The very imagination of the world is evil. But hear me tonight, we as the church, as the body of God, we have been armed and we are considered dangerous. We cast down and we demolish all theories and reasonings and ideologies and any high system of immoral and impure ethics that are contrary to the will of God and to the word of God. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. We are a royal priesthood. We are a peculiar people. Through Jesus, we have the victory. So every imagination that is contrary to that, I am armed and I am dangerous and I am capable of casting them down through the blood of Jesus. I don't have to take that mess. We don't, but you know what we do? We put up with it. And we don't speak our minds and we don't speak with the authority of the Word of God. And so we casually just go through the motions and we put up with these things. Listen, we don't have to take that mess because we have been equipped with what we need to be victorious. The scripture then said, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have the weapons and we have the power to arrest every thought and bring it into subjection. Jealousy, wickedness, impurities, immoralities, every other facet that goes contrary to the word of God must be arrested and made to be obedient to God. Listen, let me help somebody tonight. That, that old saying... The devil made me do it. That don't fly. Because we have the power within us to arrest what he tries to do and bring it into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Huh. Then verse 6 says, Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. This basically says that we have to be ready to fight. Disobedience is anything contrary to the Word of God. Listen, the, the Bible speaks of joy in four different ways. Joy, great joy, exceeding great joy, 
and joy unspeakable full of glory. If the enemy has stolen your joy, that is disobedience. So you must revenge what the enemy has taken from you. If the enemy has taken your health, and the Bible says with his stripes we are healed, then you must revenge what the enemy has stolen from you. If the Bible says that you shall have life and have it more abundantly, but, but the enemy has stolen your abundance, then you need to have revenge on that disobedience. I've come to remind you tonight that you are armed and dangerous. We have been equipped with the techniques needed to defeat the enemy and to survive and to make it through. We are more than conquerors. We can pull down strongholds. We can cast down imaginations. And we can go to the enemy's camp and get our stuff back. We are warriors. We are winners. We are royalty. We have been chosen to be victorious. We are destined for greatness. I talked about this Sunday, but God said, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of, not of evil, to give you an expected end. That expected end is to connect you where you are right now to where He's taking you in the future. That expected end is victory. Go to John chapter 8 and verse 44. You are of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. The Bible says that the devil is a liar and he is the father of all lies. In fact, we give the devil more power over us when we choose to believe his lies. To believe a lie is to be deceived. But here's the thing. When people are deceived, they're not aware that they're deceived. They believe that what they think is true and what they're acting is, is accordingly. See... One of the most difficult tasks that I have encountered in ministry is trying to convince someone who is deeply deceived that they are wrong about what they believe. Let's think for a moment how this affects our lives. If we are unaware that, that the devil is, is a real threat and we, we don't know his character and he, he can easily deceive us and we, we can end up believing many things that are not true. These beliefs will keep us from enjoying the life that Jesus died for us to have. What if you lived in poverty your entire life and when you were ready to die... Someone told you that your grandparents had left you an inheritance and you had in fact been a millionaire for the past 40 years. I'd be mad as a hornet. You could have enjoyed a totally different life than what you had. But since you didn't know anything about the inheritance, you missed out on it even though it was yours all along. This is what our lives are like when we believe Satan's lies. We don't know the truth of God's word. See, the spiritual and the material riches of Jesus' inheritance are amazing. But we miss out on them because we lack knowledge of them. We fail to know really what the word of God says is ours. And so when the devil comes our way spitting lies, we don't know what to believe. Stop and ask yourself what lies you might be believing right now that are preventing you from entering into the fullness of life that Jesus has for you. I've already stated Jesus has a plan. He has a purpose for all of us. But too many of us are being deceived by the lies of the enemy, the strongholds of the enemy that he's placing in our minds. And we can't get past that. And so God can't use us. 
See, God's Word is the antidote to, to the lies of the enemy. It helps us to recognize the truth and expose the, the enemy's attempts in deceiving us. And so as we read and, and as we study and believe God's Word, we begin to think as God wants us to think. It helps us to be in agreement with Him and, and bring to pass His good plan and His purpose for our lives. See, we, we need to come to a place in a moment in time that we, we need to ask God to show us the truth in every area of our lives. Ask God as, as we read and as we study His Word to, to open our eyes to any areas where we may be being deceived. Ask God to, to help us see ourselves the way that He sees us so that we can walk in the plans that He has for our life. That's what God is calling. God is calling us all to a deeper relationship with Him. God is calling us all to draw nearer and closer to Him at more than we've ever been in our entire lives. Now is the moment, now is the time to draw closer to Him. But too many of us are being deceived by the lies of the enemy. And the enemy is placing strongholds and imaginations in our mind and we can't get past those in order to draw nearer to God. See, when we believe what God says about us in His Word, that changes Everything. Because nothing else matters in that moment. Except for what we know God says about us in His Word. His Word should be a foundation in our life. Pray, seek the face of God, seek the will of God, get into the Word of God, study and read it for yourself and understand what God is calling you to do. Understand what God is calling you to be. And then walk in it. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you and to put strongholds and imaginations in your mind and to bring you down. You've got the power to cast those out. You've got the power to speak to those and bring them down. you just got to do it. It's entirely up to you. You have the option. So I ask you tonight in closing, what do you really believe? Do you believe in the power and the word of God? Or are you believing the lies and the deception of the enemy? The choice is ours. What will we believe? We've got to know our enemy. and We've got to know his tactics and his tricks that he tries to put against us so that we know how to fight and know how to speak against him. Amen. Will you stand with me tonight? Lord, you've been so good to us, and I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you've spoken into this house tonight. I thank you for every believer that is here tonight. I thank you for every believer that is watching via live stream. God, I, I speak blessings into their life. I speak peace and joy, long-suffering, oh God, that only you can give. I pray tonight, God, that as, as we have heard your word, help us to recognize and know our enemy, to know his tactics and his and his tricks, O oh Lord, and, and his vices that he tries to use against us. God, I, I, I pray against every spirit of deception that would try to rise up against the church and the body of believers. God, I, I pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of your word, God, that would help us to battle against the deception of the enemy and all of hell. Help us, O oh God, and help us to understand that we have the power to cast down imaginations and to bring down strongholds and, and to speak against every lie of the enemy. God, we know that you've given us that power, but it's through you and through you alone. I pray, God, that you would just help us to recognize that your spirit is living inside of us and that we have the authority to stand upon your word and to speak the power of the name of Jesus into any situation, any circumstance that we're facing that the enemy has tried to, to, to rise against us. God, I thank you for being our help. I thank you for being our, our strength and our comforter, for being our peace and our joy. God, we know that, the, that our lives are nothing without you. We've got to have you every moment of every day. We can't live, we can't move, we can't breathe without you. Our lives are, are meaningless without you. Our lives are incomplete without you. We need you every moment of every day. God, I, I pray that you would go with us from this place. Keep your hand upon us. 
God, I pray for Saturday for our trunk or treat as we reach and love on our community. I, I pray, God, that you would give us a good turnout. God, give us great weather. God, I, and as we come together to fellowship and, and to love on, on our community, God, I, I pray that you'd give us the favor, God, that, that we need. God, I, and I pray that you would bring us back here Sunday ready to worship you and, and to freely give praise unto you, O oh Lord. Help us to hear your word and to receive what you're speaking into this church. God, we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. We love you. And we'll see you back here Saturday for Trunk or Treat. Remember, be set up and ready to go by 3.30. And then Trunk or Treat will start at 4 p.m. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you Saturday.